remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius Travis Cook back with you once again, and the Syrian issue and uh, America's potential involvement in Syria has been the big political issue here in the states this week, and it's also been the big uh, international issue all across the globe. With Barack Obama making it sound as though he is definitely considering American military involvement in the Syrian conflict. Well, a lot of people have come out in opposition to Obama about that this week. A lot of them on the conservative side, and I certainly oppose the idea of American involvement as well. But I do think it would be worthwhile for us all to be clear on why we oppose such things. I think there's people that, that are using some reasoning here that I'm not entirely comfortable with. So we need to kind of get all this, all this threshed out, if you will. First of all, I know there are some conservatives out there who are going to oppose military involvement in Syria simply because Barack Obama said we should. And so some of the opposition, not a lot, but I, I think there's a little bit, a couple of people here and there who are opposing this strictly because, well, that's what Barack Obama wants. And I think we need to be a little bit little bit uh, more solid than that. I, I don't think that that's a good enough reason. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that with Barack Obama's track record of being on the wrong end of almost every single important question our society has faced for the last 10 years, I know the knee-jerk reaction of, well, Obama said it, so it must be wrong, does make a little bit of sense. But I don't think it's reasonable here. I think when it comes to military involvement and the use of our military, uh, that's something that should be nonpartisan. And it's something that should we should all be coming from the same place on. So frankly, I think there needs to be a little bit more depth to your opposition than just, well, Barack Obama said we ought to do it. I think there's more deeper reasoning than that. Also, some of the people opposing this have been some of those younger conservatives, some of those more libertarian-leaning conservatives, some that come from the Ron Paul camp of isolationism and pacifism. Some of those are people that don't think America should be involved militarily with anyone, anywhere, for any reason, unless we're directly attacked. These are some of the people who would have been against our involvement in Iraq. So to those people, I would say, you know what, you're a little bit off as well. Now, I agree with both of those groups that... America should not get involved in Syria. But I think both of those groups have reasoning that's a little bit flawed. Let me explain to you where I'm coming from. To be clear, and you've heard me say it on the show a couple times, I might be the last of the remaining neocons when it comes to foreign policy. Unlike a lot of people in the conservative movement today, I'm one of those old school guys that does believe that our military can and sometimes should be used to enforce change in the world that's beneficial to America in the long run. I don't have a problem doing that. I'm also one of those people that thought at the time that our involvement in Iraq was perfectly justified, was the right thing to do, and as I sit here in 2013, I still think our involvement in Iraq was far and away the right thing to do. Saddam Hussein had been a thorn in our side for many years. He was undergoing, a, a, our intelligence showed that he was undergoing a nuclear weapons program that he was going to fight us with. There were weapons of mass destruction over there in Iraq that our intelligence told us about, and which were found, by the way. Yes, the WMDs were found in, in Iraq, even though the liberal media doesn't want you to know that. So everything we did in Iraq was completely justified. But Syria is not the same situation, not by a long shot. This dude who's in charge of Syria, this Assad guy, let's face it, he's a bad dude. He's a bad mother. Hush your mouth. I'm just talking about Assad. This Assad, by all rights, should be out of power and he should be dead. You won't get any argument from me on that. And John Kerry came out and laid out this whole case for all the bad stuff Assad's done to his people. And hey, I'm not going to doubt a word of it, John. I'm not going to doubt a word of it, Mr. Obama. I believe everything you've told me that Assad's doing. He's a bad mamma jamma. But the problem is that those who seem to be opposing Assad seem to be just as bad. Now, it would take us an hour or two to discuss the entire opposition to Assad right now. It's far more complex and complicated than most foreign affairs you see. But let's just say this much. The opposition, the opposition to Assad right now is a hodgepodge of all these different groups, kind of patched together in some sort of loose coalition. But among those groups are the Muslim Brotherhood, 
who attacked us at Benghazi and killed four Americans, a group that still has a debt of blood that needs to be paid to America. There's some Al-Qaeda elements in there. I saw a story just the other day where there were rebels and opposition people pledging allegiance to Al-Qaeda. So that's who we should go in and help? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Now let me be clear. If the goal of Barack Obama's military intervention in Syria, if that goal were to invade Syria, remove Assad, and replace him with a pro-Western, pro-Christian, pro-American government, I'd be all for it. As much as I hate Barack Obama, as much as he's a treasonous rat bastard, I would back him 100% on that. But up to this point, it certainly has not sounded as though that's what Barack Obama's intention is. And when you look back at Obama's history through his first few terms of the presidency and his, his actions in Egypt and so forth, he certainly does not seem as though he's the type of leader who wants to defeat Islam in the Middle East and replace it with a pro-Western, pro-America, pro-Christian type of mentality. That's just not where he's going. Sorry. I can't believe that out of you. George W. Bush, maybe I can believe that out of. Barack Obama, not so much. Instead, Obama's talking about limited strikes. Well, sorry, but what good is that going to do? You don't think a guy like Assad's going to just shovel his civilians right in front of wherever we're striking? You think he gives a damn? You know he doesn't give a damn. Limited strikes aren't going to cut it. Let me be clear. If you are going to get involved militarily anywhere, then you need to fight to win. You need to fight to positively change that nation in a method that's going to be advantageous to America. If there's one thing our nation has faltered a little bit at since Vietnam, it's that we've had this tendency to fight wars not to lose instead of fight them to win. Now, I take the idea of sending the military in somewhere very seriously, and I believe if you do it, you've got to fight to win. Yes, that's ugly. Yes, that's violent. Yes, it's brutal. Yes, it's bloody. But it's far better than the alternative. It's far better than a protracted war where you can't win and you just fight not to lose and you end up with a lot more casualties than you need to anyway. So if it were a full-out war to change Syria to the type of country it needs to be, I could get behind it. But I don't see Barack Obama going there. And, and be fair, he is not given the indication that he's willing to go there. You know, we did a show a couple weeks ago about foreign aid. And I said at the time, in, in reference to foreign aid, I said that foreign aid should not be used for so-called humanitarian measures or for high-minded uses of moving the world forward and all that other crap. Instead, I said foreign aid should be used to maintain and press America's advantage on the world stage. Period. Well, I believe the same thing about the military. I take it very seriously when we send the military in somewhere. If we're going to do it, then the overall goal needs to be to enhance America's position. Period. End of story. And I have not been convinced to this point of the argument that military action in Syria will enhance and press an advantage for us in the Middle East. Now, one more thing. There are some people who criticize the potential of going in there because of the fact they feel it will provoke Iran or provoke Russia will end up in a war with them. For my money, that's not a very good reason to oppose this. Uh, let's face it, if Iran and Russia are that easily provoked, then we're going to be at war with them anyway, and we might as well do it on our terms. And let, make no mistake, I think we're going to be in a war with Iran within five or ten years anyway. So that aspect is not a factor in my decision making. We shouldn't avoid conflicts with potential enemies just because we're afraid of engaging them. We should have no reason to be afraid of Iran. But hey, if we're going to fight Iran, let's do it on our terms, not theirs. Let's be honest about it. Let's go in front of it. Let's invade Iran. Forget all the little pity pat games of going into Syria, going in here, going in there. And forget the idea of helping our enemies in hopes that they will then believe we're benevolent and then uh, side with us. That's not going to happen. Sorry. In closing, someone told me the other day that he thinks we ought to just stay out of this thing and let them kill each other off in Syria. Well, I'll admit that's a very tempting and a very attractive idea. But in practice, it's probably not going to end up happening that cleanly. One side or the other is going to emerge in power. At this point, I don't really care which one. It's six of one, half a dozen the other. They're both evil. But I think it would be more advantageous to us to let them go and fight it out 
And whoever ends up in power is then going to be a little bit vulnerable. They will have suffered casualties. They will have expended resources to win. And at that point, they might just be a sitting duck. Maybe that's when we go in and pick up the scraps. And maybe by that point, Barack Obama will be out of office and we'll have a good conservative president in there who will go to military action for the right reasons because I don't trust Barack Obama to do it given his actions over the last several years. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.